Look at this guy. Come on, I haven't seen my friend. We never uh, met you. before. Look at this. How you doing, Bobby? Good. We are on the air right now. It's a, always look at you guys. How you doing? Yeah. What do your friends call you? They call you John, John Michael, John Boy, John Boy. Yeah, uh, my brother Eddie's called me John Boy since I, we, you know, we were kids sleeping in the same room together, and you know, a little two or three room house, you know, in Kentucky there, and then that. Of course, we always watched the Waltons growing up. I know, you know? the Waltons. John, good night, John Boy. Good oh, night, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we watched that. Uh, we only had three stations, so that was one of the popular ones back in the 70s. But uh, And uh, all my golfing buddies calls me J.M. They okay. call me J.M. What know? would you like me to call you? Huh? Mr. Awesome? Can I call you Mr. Awesome? Well, sure, man. <laughs> I, yeah. I won't complain about yeah, that one, Ben. John yeah. Michael Montgomery's here. It's really cool yeah. to meet you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. You too. Been a fan yeah. for a long time. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I, it's uh, hard to believe it's, you know, been 27 years on the road, you know. I mean, coming out of the Honky Tonks and nightclubs back in Kentucky, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I guess uh, as uh, uh, Waylon Jennings, uh, I, uh, I did a song of Waylon Jennings here year, few, back in the 90s, and, of course, you know, that famous uh, thing he said, if I'd known I was going to live this long, I'd taken better care of myself. Right. You know? But uh, it's been a it's been a wonderful trip, I tell you. So I appreciate you having me on your show, by the way. Yeah, of uh, course. Well, I'm going to play a couple things here. I don't know if you get, you want to listen on the headphones real quick for one second. Yeah. You don't. Have to, I know you got a cowboy hat on, so it's kind of tough. But if you put it up next to your ear, I got a lot of questions for you. Okay. Here. Why don't we start with this oh, one? Yeah. Oh, he goes behind. I like oh, that. It goes behind the cowboy how it's hat. Done. That's how it's done. Okay. So I'm going to play this for you because uh, this is you. Okay. I swear. That's you. You know you. Then this is not you. It's all for one. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the truth of this is you had the song first, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a really uh, funny story because uh, uh, Frank Myers uh, and I was writing uh, after I Love the Way You Love Me Win number one, and I, you know, I was celebrating that, so he pitched me that song on a cassette tape up in uh, Kentucky. I cut it, put it out, and went to, you know, uh, was ended up being you know bigger than I love the way you love me and all that stuff. So I get called into the uh, Atlantic Records, uh, the head of Atlantic Records, Rick Blackburn, you know, and he says, "Hey, uh, you, uh, they want to know, you know, maybe you want to go pop with that song, you know." And I was if like, you wanted to go pop yeah. first, and I was like, I said, "No," nah. I said, "I'm I'm good," you know. And uh, so he said, "Well, there's another group who want to put it out. Atlantic Records in New York wants to put it out," and I said, "Hey, that sounds good to me." And about a month later, they come out with it. And uh, and the, what was funny, I saw them at a, the next uh, few months later, I saw them at an Atlantic Records party here in Nashville, the All For One guys, and we got to talking about our next record. And I guess we both spit out the song, I Can Love You Like That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they looked at me and they went, you're cutting that too? I said, yeah, I said, you're cutting that too. And like, so uh, uh, Steve Diamond was a co-writer on that. And, uh, you know, it, it worked out perfect. I mean. Uh, That's crazy that you had a song that yeah. they cut that just by itself. The whole story's weird yeah. and cool. But then again, it happens again that here you go. This yeah. is you. Now, yeah. on this one here, who cut it first? Well, we actually did both of us the same time on that one. Uh, it was very cleverly played out by the publishing companies to pitch it to us both and we both had albums we were working on coming out on Atlantic and uh, uh, so we literally put it out on radio at the same time I mean and they both uh, went up the charts at the same time it was very cool to watch actually you know both of those songs uh, I really felt like deserved to be able to be heard you know in uh, the R&B pop format too because they were you know obviously perfect for it and I just didn't really I, I wanted to be a country artist, and I didn't really want to cross over. Uh, in you know, I wanted to draw the line in the sand and just stay there. And it, I think it was uh, better that they did those songs. So, did you ever get up and all you guys sing together, like all five one? Did you ever do a thing with y'all? Was that ever said all for one? No, I no? think uh, uh, we did do a little video of the uh, I for I swear. Uh, we did a little. Uh, I sang a little part on it, and, you know, and everything like that. To, it's like the 20th anniversary or something here, maybe two or three years ago, and we uh, it was kind of a cool little video. And I think you might be able to find it on YouTube or something like that. Come on, we're going all we're going through my childhood here, John. <laughs> what do you think about when you hear that one? Oh, I think about. Uh, how lucky I was to be able to, uh, you know, get a record deal. I've been playing nightclubs and bars five nights a week for several years in the 80s and and uh, 
you know, Atlantic Records popped into Lexington, uh, Kentucky, and they came by and, and uh, they said, yeah, we were down uh, the road here at this other place and this waitress came up and said, the best singer in town's up this other place. His name's John Michael Montgomery. And they said, we agree with her and we'd like to give you a record deal. And so, wow. we, and I was like, really? And of course I was thinking, you know, I'll never see these guys ever again. They are going to leave town. And two weeks later they came back up and, uh, and then uh, Doug Johnson, who was the uh, uh, producer on that album, Lights of Dance, brought that song to me along with, I love the way you love me and beer and Bone. <laughs> Man, you got that down. That's pretty cool. You read my mind. That's a good one. Man, so then we talked about, I swear. I swear. How about this one, though, right here? You got so many fast songs. It's like, I, I don't know how you keep all your breath. Well, I tell you, I love doing, uh, uh, when you play nightclubs a lot, you got to keep the crowd entertained. And, you know, you want them to dance once in a while. You want them to slow dance, fast dance. You want them to cry, laugh, and all that. So, a lot of my albums, I love the tongue twister stuff, you know, and uh, Be My Baby Tonight was my first attempt at that. And uh, as a matter of fact, Atlantic Records, a lot of people, they didn't like that song. They thought it was too hokey. And I said, oh, no, people, you know, they're going to love this. And so when I came around and did so, they didn't argue with me at all. Nah. <laughs> they, got it, they got it, you know. But, uh, uh, you know, I was so blessed to be able to have so many wonderful songwriters pitch me, you know, some great songs. And, uh, you know, I think uh, probably I, I wrote some myself. Uh, you know, I Miss You a Little was probably one that my saddest ones I wrote because my father had passed away in 94 in, uh, of prostate cancer, and he's my best friend, my mentor, you know, so I wrote that about him. But, uh, uh, you know, I was just, uh, I couldn't believe the uh, things that were happening to me. I, I, you know, was a pinch yourself every year, you know, and, uh, you know, I just, uh, the, the 90s were obviously the best times of my life, no doubt about it, other than my kids growing up, obviously, I, you know, which I had two 20 something year olds now, you know, that's in the music business. So, uh, they're doing, they're doing great. So I'm, I have no complaints. I'm, I'm glad to be able to still be out here doing it. If you got love, come on. That's funny. Yeah. That's, that's one of my favorites, believe it or not, that I enjoy singing. I, I tell people, you know, I had the, uh, I had the positive love songs, you know, the up tempo ones, you know, and, uh, but, and I enjoy singing those just as much as I do the, you know, the ballads uh, like I swear and everything too. Look at all these numbers. I got a whole list of number ones. There. Also got a whole list of dates that you can go watch. John Michael Montgomery, uh, April 26th in Greenville, Texas. May 27th in Orem, Utah. Biloxi on June 1st. A lot of our cities. June 15th at the Grizzly Rose in Denver, Colorado. You ever, you ever played there, the Grizzly Rose? Oh, yeah. It's as awesome. a matter of fact, uh, the Grizzly Rose has probably, uh, I've been playing the Grizzly Rose for 20-something years. We always go back there, and uh, that's one of my first stop-offs. Stop as a matter of fact, I think when you're a new artist, the Grizzly Rose needs to be yeah, right? on your list to play because it is truly uh, one of a kind, you know. And, of course, and I love the Rocky Mountains when, you know, I'm, I love to go out to the Rocky Mountains. Uh, and uh, so that gives me a chance to go out there and enjoy that also. Sold over 16 million albums. Look at you. Yeah. Well, I can't even count that high. Like I said, I, I, I mean, it's, it's still hard to believe uh, that uh, all that happened to me, you know, because I, I was just a guy I loved to pick and sing. My mom and dad played music. You know, my dad was a you know, guitar player, singer. My mom played drums in his band and sang. And my brother Eddie, you know, Montgomery Gentry, uh, you know, they used to get us up every weekend when we was five, six years old, and we'd sing, you know, Elvis and stuff and everything. And uh, we just loved the music, and we loved to sing it. And I had no idea that all this would happen to me one day. And, you know, like I said, uh, uh, sometimes everything happens for a reason, I guess. Well, I got to say, too, I'm, I'm excited that you're here. I know you had vocal surgery. Yeah. And when yeah. did you start seeing again? Like April this month? This yeah, week? yeah. Literally, I took uh, had three months off. I had a polyp removed. And, uh, Pretty scary, you know, huh? And, uh, yeah, because you don't know how, you know, when you come back, if it's going to be as strong. Or, so, uh, you know, I'm being a little gentle with it right now because I, I'm one of them kind of guys that uh, back in the 90s when I got my first hit, you know, uh, I was – I didn't say no to anything. It's like, tell me which way to go, you know, and I went, you know, and I, and I was in, I felt like I was invincible, invincible, invincible. I, I felt like my vocal cords were invincible, you know, but I also realized, you know, going out on the road is different than playing five nights a week in a bar. When you go out on the road and I try to tell this to new artists all the time and, you know, 
it's like you have to – I didn't know how to take care of my voice. So I went out there and I did a thousand interviews and, you know, I took the honky-tonk show out on the road with me. I mean, you know, we had a – uh, uh, we had a fifth of whiskey in the back of the bus. I mean, you know, me and my brother, I mean, we, we all were honky tonkers. And when you get out on the road and you, it, it's, uh, it's a, a lot harder on you physically. And uh, so I, you know, I, I ended up, you know, paying for that a couple of times, you know, we, this ain't my first vocal surgery, you know, so, but, uh, you know, you learn to, uh, you know, when you go out on the road that you have to, you have limitations. You got to rest and learn how to take care of your voice and all that stuff. And I, it's been a learning curve for me. So, uh, you know, had my ups and downs and, uh, there was a time when I walked on stage, I was like, is it going to work tonight or not? Oh, really? You know, I mean, and sometimes it did. And then sometimes it didn't, you know, and you're like, you know, you just, you're at a, you just, you're, it's like the worst for a singer, it's the worst time of your life to go on stage not knowing if your vocal cords are going to work or not. You know what I mean? And uh, especially when you have all these songs that you love to sing and you're like, I can't do them, you know? So, but, uh, you know, you just kind of keep uh, battling on. And, uh, you know, I wish I had uh, uh, vocal cords of steel like Merle Haggard <laughs> and, and Willie Nelson. I mean, them guys, man, I tell you what, you're talking about people. It, that amazed me because, you know, I, I got to know Merle Haggard back in the 90s and, and uh, you know, and he uh, he's a great guy, but I'm telling you, he had vocal cords. I mean, that guy was just an unbelievable singer, you know, and he just, uh, you know, doing 100 shows a year and Willie Nelson's still doing it. Still, I, uh, yeah. I mean, man, you know, um, those guys are, to me, incredible. Those are the guys I grew up watching and, uh, you know, and, and everything and, and, uh, Hopefully, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'd like to be able to give Willie a run for his money, but I don't, I don't know anybody's going to be able to, what's he like 82 he, or three. I mean, hadn't been touring for what 60, 70 years now. I mean, how unbelievable. I don't even know what that? Willie looks like young. Like I was, when I was born, Willie yeah. was already old and kill and awesome and killing it as an old guy. I don't know young Willie. One of my first songs I ever did in a talent contest was uh, Angels Flying Too Close to the Ground. Mm -hmm. And I used to sit around, and, you know, and I mean, I love that song, still love today, you know. And I, I used to imitate Willie, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I do it. I like this, yeah. You know, me and Eddie, we'd take turns. And Eddie and I, we would do like, uh, he got he could do Willie better than I. So then me and him started doing Willie and Waylon. A long time forgotten, you know. I'd do that part and everything. And we just had a big old time. We still, when we get together once in a while, we'll do the, uh, you know, Willie Waylon stuff. People love it, you know. Eddie and I will do Eddie and Julio because Eddie's Mexican. <laughs> so I do Willie. I do Willie and he does Julio. You know, yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me mention this real quick. I think it'd be a uh, good plug for Walker. Like, say something about Walker for a second. Walker, uh, Walker is, uh, he's been down here for about a year writing music and everything. He uh, put His son. Out, yeah, my son, Walker, yeah. Walker Montgomery. And he, he wrote a song called Simple Town about where he's from, Nicholsville, Kentucky. And uh, he loves where he's, you know, from and everything. And uh, he put out an EP on it. And it really, it's like got over 3 million uh, listeners on Spotify and stuff. Been doing great. But he, he's a really good songwriter and, and singer. He's, he's actually got like... Uh, this beautiful love song called I Heard It Here First that's uh, being played on CMT right now. And uh, he want, he loves the business. It's, you know, I mean, he, he, I can see it in his eyes. He was, you know, like me and Eddie was. I mean, he is, his love for the music and desire for it is incredible. So he comes down here, he lives down here now, really. And, and absolutely is a really good songwriter, good singer. And so he's been wearing it out down here and, uh, you know, 20 years old. I mean, you know, and uh, so the love that he has for it, I see in his eyes, I hope it works out for him because, I mean, he, uh, you know, there's no more satisfaction than loving something that much and having it work out for you. Trust me. Well, listen, I'm happy you're here. Always been a big fan. Good to finally meet you. I appreciate it, man. You yeah. too. I've heard a lot about you. You know, Sorry I mean, that. I hear you got a, I hear you, I'm jealous because I hear you got this uh, disco ball that oh, you yeah, won yeah, on. Yeah, uh, yeah I danced. <laughs> <laughs> I danced that, my little heart out. Yeah. Listen, That's I learned it. I learned a lot of those dance moves though. The Electric Cowboy probably dancing to your songs though at first. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you probably got a little something to do with that. Uh, John Michael Montgomery uh, on Instagram at John Michael Montgomery, and I appreciate you. And he's out on the road. I, I read a lot of the dates, but. Um, out making a living go 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 support him always yeah always please come on out you'll have a good time i mean you know if there's one thing that uh, people ask me they go uh, uh 
are you when are you going to retire you know i'm like uh, you know country music don't singers they don't retire they just kind of ride off in the sunset you know and i said i'm just going to keep on keeping on till i can't keep on anymore but uh, uh getting on stage is still the drive of getting on stage and seeing the fans out there waiting to hear me sing my songs is always been uh, the number one satisfaction uh you know since i played the club since i was a kid and as long as uh they keep coming and seeing me i'm gonna keep on doing it love it thanks for coming by appreciate hopefully, it hopefully we'll see Absolutely. you again soon all right john oh, michael awesome. montgomery everybody it's about show.